Welcome to Disturbingly Cheap Reviews. This week we take a look at yet another straight-to-DVD sequel. It's the sci-fi original film, Lake Placid 2. Which, according to the movie itself, takes place a few years after the ending to the first film. Now why do I mention that? Because apparently the people of Lake Placid are stupid. And in this brief amount of time, the story of the crocodiles has become folklore within the town. There must have been one heck of a cover-up is all that I can assume. Those who you would think would still be in the town of Lake Placid are lip-serviced away by a very witty screenwriter. Our new sheriff is played by John Schneider, and if you recognize that name, it means you've watched way too much Dukes of Hazard. Also, you shouldn't be looking for Betty White. Instead, we've picked up Cloris Leachman to be her crazy sister who just happened to move into Betty's house after that character died. How convenient. Anyway, this movie seems to borrow a lot from the original. It's almost as if the decision was made to do a poorly done remake and call it a sequel. However, to try and seem different, this time the Fish and Wildlife Department member is a woman, and she just happened to have a failed relationship with Sheriff Bo Duke. When the movie does try and be original, it still fails, taking the traditional dumb teens and throwing them around to be fodder for our hungry beasts. They're filler for both us and the crocodile's stomach. Because you have to work in that CGI gore somehow. I suppose I should say that if you are a fan of sci-fi originals, you'll be getting what you expect. I normally am, but this time, I am also a fan of the original film. And if you are in the same boat, you are going to be sorely disappointed. The CGI is abominable. The script is either paying tribute, or just copying and pasting before changing words. The acting is, well, not good. John Schneider does well, but that was the only entertaining member of the cast to me. In all, this movie wants to be as likable as the original, but comes off what it truly is, a poorly done homage. I'll give it a D. Now I'm going to segue into our spoilers, as smooth as every week. Okay, so of course our female character discovers the severed head of the man who dies at the beginning of the movie, because it's pretty much required for these monster movies to start out with someone getting knocked off. Then they meet Cloris Leachman, who of course hates the cops and refuses to help. As they go somewhere else, our heroes are attacked, forced to swim to shore. Around this time, a seaplane arrives, and with it, a famous poacher. Because our witty writers decided the best idea was to take the unique Oliver Platt character and do the exact opposite with it. Doesn't really matter, I suppose, as people get killed off left and right, including the poacher. Surprise, surprise, it's been revealed that Cloris Leachman has been slipping the crocs some food, somehow getting her hands on hormone-enhanced meat that was rejected by the government. Yeah, because we needed that little addition? I guess that makes it different from Betty White just throwing cows out there, right? And remember the big reveal that there were two crocodiles in the first movie? Well, this movie knows how to make that even better. It doubles it. That's right, four crocodiles. Isn't that great? And the ending goes as you'd expect. It's cliche stuff. The main heroes live. A few teens go from grumpy to loving each other. Because when you see your boyfriend get aged, you might as well just cling to the guy who didn't die. It's easier to get presents on your birthday that way. And the movie ends by giving us a proper sequel tease that sci-fi cashed in on later. But that... <laughs> that is for another day. So until next time, just go watch the original. Yeah, that sounds like an idea.